So this is day two of the Shakedown Cruise. I'm out here with Zoe and the uh, Pamlico Sound. We left for Ocracoke yesterday uh, from Oriental. And the reason we're starting this video on day two is because my phone went overboard, so I've switched over to the GoPro. I lost all the footage and the footage for about four other videos, so that's really a bummer. As well as not having my phone also. Luckily Zoe's got hers, so we'll use that for navigation. I was gonna have a backup anyway, but uh, this reinforces the need for a backup. It came out of the cockpit when the stuff got a little bit rough last night. Uh, Let's we'll see what's happened. Uh, it was good, good. Sail was going really good. We we're fixing a lot of issues that were kind of popping up as you would expect on our shakedown cruise. Fixed up the jib. It was a purling right, so I got that sorted out. Uh, we got the spinnaker all fixed, figured, and we were, we were cruising along really good. It was going a really good sail. Uh, and then I turned the motor on to go into the channel last night. It might have just been we had too much wind we were trying to motor against. And so when that didn't work, I decided to sail in the channel. Unfortunately, by then the sun had set. And uh, uh, so I was going in at night. Uh, really not ideal, but I had, you know, I could see the markers pretty well. Um, then I kind of made a mistake and ended up missing a tack as I was trying to go in. And I uh, wasn't able to get the boat back on course without going until I went out of the channel. Uh, as I jived the boat around because I couldn't tack, I lost the main sheet. I went forward to get the main sheet. It was just cascading events. Uh, I lost my phone overboard. And uh, as I was finally getting the main sheet under control, we kind of went outside the channel. We we're going to ground. Uh, as I pulled in the main sheet, got hooked around the Doraid box. Lost the Doraid box. Uh, somewhere along the line, I lost a shroud, one of my lowers. Uh, the turnbuckle came loose. That was probably unrelated to the other stuff. I didn't have my uh, my little split rings or powder pins in the turnbuckles because I was. Still meaning to tune the rig up a little bit more, but uh, I obviously should have had that done before. Uh, I'm working on fixing that right now. I just, I just removed the shroud from the top or the spreaders, and I'm going to go run up a piece of Dyneema. I'll splice that in just so I can get the sails up. So we should be coming up on high tide in about an hour, hour and a half. See if I can get the motor situated. We just need to make about 500 feet back to get back in the channel. And uh, I can pretty much, when I climb the mast, I can see where it was shallow. So I think we'll be able to do it uh, without running the ground too much. If not, I think I could winch myself through it. It's just going to be uh, a lot of, we'll call it an adventure. Uh, I'll see you guys when I have any more updates. So here is where that shroud uh, came undone. And then that's where the Dory box used to be. Uh, I'm going to try to run a new line up there just to support the mast a little better as we sail in. So here I'm measuring the old shroud to make my new one the same length and then just putting a splice in the end. At one point I managed to drop the old shroud overboard and then I had to swim down and get that. It's all spliced in. Okay. We are moving very slowly. Heading back towards the channel, we have a little bit of depth right now. Just we're, we're struggling go, going against this wind. We're going against maybe 10 knots of wind right now. Right on our nose. So maybe once we get in the channel, I can hang a little left. And we'll maybe I'll be able to motor sail a little bit. And maybe we'll make it all the way in that way. Yeah. Coming in Ocracoke Harbor. Um, got the Genoa out. And there's some rocks and some big houses and ships and stuff. And we're just gonna try to anchor out in there, I guess. That's the plan from Sam. I just dropped the anchor. We're in eight and a half feet of water and I put out 80 feet of chain. Nice quiet in here. And I don't know which dock we go. I think we might have to go all the way over there, but we'll put the motor on the dinghy if we need to. Lingonberry and Hope Cove. Right, the lighthouse is 75 feet tall and you can see it from 14 miles. Looks like we are going to enter. Yeah, I went in. That's recording. 
Hello, how are you doing? Hi. So uh, this is the oldest continually operating lighthouse. Driftwood. We'll go for a swim. We just weighed anchor from Ocracoke Harbor. It's two hours before sunset. Um, had a good time here. We went to the beach. Uh, we we waded through some tidal pools and saw some neat crabs. We got we went to an oyster bar and got some good oysters. We saw a lighthouse. Lighthouse. And, uh, Learned some facts. We got we 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 really explored the whole place by by dinghy too. Now having that electric motor lets us get to more interesting beaches. We and a cool luxury experience. We know I would probably stay another night and leave in the morning, but it looks like it's going to be really strong. Uh, winds against us if we wait uh, too late, so we're going to get a, a head start overnight. There you go. We're cruising wing on wing down through the channel out of Ocracoke into the Pamlico Sound. <coughs> Looks very big, but it's very shallow out there if I don't stay in between these markers. Uh, once I get out of the channel, then I might try to put out the spinnaker. We're pretty much going straight downwind. And I'd say we're doing about four and a half knots right now with maybe, maybe eight knots of wind. I didn't end up doing the spinnaker because uh, the wind picked up a little more and uh, I was only going to be able to use it for about 30 minutes on the course I was on. I'll, I'll use it another time, maybe on the passage again. Uh, I'd like to get some more footage of that thing, it looks awesome. Uh, I got that from the used pile at the Oriental Yacht Club I was staying at. Uh, Jonathan set me up with that. Really like that. Pack. We are going to we're sailing through the night now. It's about 11 p.m. Uh, I've been able to keep the full mainsail up and still have the wind vane kind of keep it on course. It could probably use a reef right now. Um, it would it would stay on course a little better, but it's it, it's nice to be doing this 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 good speed. And uh, I think the wind might lighten it up in a few hours. Uh, at which point. I might just end up drifting if it comes to uh, knowing to sail, but I really wanted to get out of Ocracoke before we had some really strong uh, you know, southwest winds coming. I think that was going to kind of mess things up. I was going to try to wait any longer to leave. We made it back into the marina at um, about five this morning, and then I, I took a, a nap, and now I'm up, up, and uh, going to start working on the list. Uh, of course, where the list go? Here it is. So this is a list of things I came up with and need to fix from the shakedown, and uh, trying to trying to remember all the stuff that was on the phone I needed to fix too. But <clears throat> I'm gonna start working on that right away after breakfast at least. And then I'm gonna need to. Uh, there was about a week and a half worth of projects that I had on video, and I don't have that, so I'm gonna do probably like a tour of the boat. And I don't remember what projects I've showed and what I haven't, so I'll just kind of go over an overview of all the stuff I've been working on. One of the things I need to figure out is this uh, Radium Go. I got the SIM card for it. I just got the unlimited service. It was, <clears throat> I think, $140 a month for unlimited. Uh, and I'll probably just keep it for about two months and then maybe switch to a prepaid or something if I want to keep using it. But I don't know where the card goes. I'm, I'm guessing I need to unscrew this. Maybe let me get some... Uh, some tools out over here. Eggs and eggs out. <laughs> Figure this guy out. Looks like there's an old SIM card in there, so let's pop that guy out. It was a second in picture, and I'm like, um, I'm taking appointments. I'm loading up all the stuff in the attic. And after carrying a few of these, these heavy bins all the way up these stairs, I decided to make a hoist uh, with a block and tackle. And that so much easier. Hi. 
So the door aid is all kind of ripped up here. So I'm going to cut it off. I do these lines and I'm getting rid of these, taking out these screws so I don't hit saw into them. A new font for pickled herring. This will be the first half. So I'm just going to send this to the machine over here. This is my test piece of my 3D printed uh, bug net. I used a 0.25 millimeter nozzle and I think it's a little bit, holes are a little too small to see good out of so I'm going to widen the gap just a hair. I think that'll still keep out the small mosquitoes hopefully. And then the, uh, the name is printing over here, the pickled herring, starting with the second half. And then I did this par parametrically so I could just adjust the net spacing to uh, maybe 1.5. We got a real big package today. Let's open it up and see what we got. This is from Bogue RV. And they sent me it if I make a video about it. It's a really big fridge compared to my other one. How do I get it open? Oh, it's got some tape on there. So now that I've got more solar panels, I should be able to run this guy. And that's pretty cool. It's got a big freezer bin and then a little freezer section, a refrigeration section here. And it looks like there's a light. And uh, I like that it's got a thing to hold the door open. And a little basket, you can take everything out. That's kind of cool. So when I need to clean it, because I always get like nasty stuff down there, I just take all the food out there and set it aside and clean it out. Um, looks like it's got some controls over here, different modes. And it runs on a 12 volt or 24 volt. Um, and then I think they usually include a an adapter so you can run it on uh, with the wall power. The gadgets you get with it. So the cigarette lighter thing, for power for the car. Um, it comes with a handle. And I think this is the wall power adapter. If you want to use it that way. There you go. US plug. And I think it's 50, 50 liters, is that the size? Not sure if it says. They don't say. But they asked which one I want. I said, give me the big one, since I already got a small one. And the current is, it's uh, 60, 60 watts. So we'll see if my solar panels will keep up with that. And uh, if I can't find a place for this on the boat, I've got some, some plans down the road to maybe do a camper for some, for some shore-based adventures, and uh, this would probably be awesome for that. Check the mail, I got another package. Let's see what we got. So I emailed uh, Gil a little bit ago and asked if I could try out one of their um, sailing jackets. On my trip to Hawaii, I just used a pea coat and uh, that and some other wore a light rain jacket. It worked pretty good, but Eventually it would kind of get saturated, it got too wet, and uh, I had a pair of uh, Gill uh, uh, bibs, and uh, foul weather bibs, and they just, they were really great, so I, I like the, like the Gill stuff, so I, I want to try out their jacket. This is, I think the, the Gill OS2 Offshore Jacket. I'm going offshore, looks like it's pretty well made. I like that it has a really large plastic zipper because that's been killed a lot of my other jackets that I tend to sail a lot with. Um, pretty warm and cozy. I think this will be real nice. Good for some foul weather. This feels definitely a lot more uh, waterproof than the Patagonia jacket I've been wearing. I think this is gonna work great. Thanks, Gil. I'm sure you'll be seeing me in this and a lot of the videos. So now we are using the Sailrite fabricator to make this is a hatch cover just because I have some of this awesome Acre canvas. So my first 3D printed screen finished. 
And uh, these are actually printed in two pieces, and then I have this middle piece that connects the two halves together, and then I just squeeze it with uh, some channel locks and lock it. And try not to break it. There it goes. Snaps pretty good. So I got the shot workshop pretty much all cleared out. Um, for the guy that's running the place, I left my sewing machine, a little kitchen, and uh, the tools for him, but other than that, it's like super empty. I got all my stuff up in the attic, and in the uh, little loft in, in here. So now, off to go sail the world. I just got back from the Apple store, and it's spent a ridiculous amount of money to get a new iPhone. This is the 12 Mini. I decided I like to have the ultra wide camera lens, but the, I, the telephoto uh, doesn't really zoom very far anyway, and digital zoom looks, I think, just as good. Uh, and I got the one with more storage so I can have a lot more videos, hopefully. And I also got this thing, which I'm really stoked about because charging is the worst thing on my boat. I go through so many charging cables. They came out with this new circle charger and the old ones they I used them before but they're really slow um, but this one's supposed to be faster and it sticks on the phone so I would have the problem where I'd always like have it almost on the phone and then wouldn't charge overnight so hopefully this will solve my problems of being able to charge in the rain and things like that I hope this phone's still waterproof too I didn't look it up so here's the puck and for like $40 this is all you get they don't even include the the wall port that one it's this I'm gonna need some USB-C plugs too. I was been super bummed to my that my phone lost all those videos. I had like four or five videos worth of videos, and I was gonna post them like as I was sailing across the Atlantic, so I could still get YouTube money. But I have to just make some more now. Oh, here are some videos. Search on boxing for this is on there real strong. I think that'll be Got no it. problem. Here's some videos. It looks, looks like another 3D print has finished. So pop that guy out. These screens, because of the small nozzle diameter, they take a, I mean, they look really nice with the print quality, but they, they take a long time to print. And again, the filament is Matter Hackers Pro. Um, which PLA, which I really like putting in PLA. That's my favorite. The only thing is if you leave them in the sun, they tend to warp. So these, these might not hold up in the sun. In that case, I might want to print them with some ASA. I'm going to start another print. Yeah, so four hours, 41 minutes. If I had a bigger nozzle, this thing could probably be done in an hour, hour and a half. So Zoe helped me sew this um, Bimini cover, and I told, told her the measurements I want, but I somehow had botched it, and I made it a little too big, so I need to just hand this over again, shrink it down. Um, so that'll be one project for tonight, and then also I'm going to use these scraps and just make some little bags to hang on my lifelines and to hold some of the stray lines, like the, the furly line and stuff that always ends up on the floor and maybe a couple dock lines, just keep them out of the way. So there we got a nice little pouch for holding my furling line, keeping it out of the cockpit floor. Um, and then I'll do just a, maybe a couple of little stra straps with snaps to hold it onto the, the lifeline. I guess and maybe the, I put this Acri uh, canvas on the top and that should help it from getting, uh, maybe keep a little the sunshine off of it. And then of course the mesh to let the water drain off. Thanks for watching. The uh, Shakedown Cruise was kind of chaotic, but I'm glad all that stuff happened uh, on the Shakedown, and hopefully I'll get it all straightened out before I leave. I think I'm still on track to leave probably this weekend, so probably heading out around June 7th-ish. Um, just kind of doing the final preparations on the boat. I'll keep posting some videos until I until right up until I leave. Um, really excited to share the, the trip across the Atlantic with you guys. I'll see you guys next time.